Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Jeremy Walsh, and I'm the Director of Support, Training, and Documentation for BNI Connect. I'd like to welcome everybody to the webinar today. Uh, today's webinar is part four in a five-part series of webinars designed for really brand new members um, or people that are just logging into BNI Connect for the first time. We step through the system in a series of 30-minute uh, sessions in order to give you kind of bite-sized pieces and of different areas of BNI Connect. So what we're going to be talking about today is going to be the member tools and reports. So last week we talked about how to fill out your profile, then we talked about how to pass referrals and record your other weekly activity in BNI Connect. Then we talked about the social media side of BNI Connect, so how to reach out and find other members uh, around the world in BNI. Again, today we're going to talk about the member tools and reports, and tomorrow we're going to be talking about the visitor process in BNI Connect and how that can help to streamline things, both inviting visitors and getting visitors registered for a meeting, which can help to increase the number of visitors that will actually show up once you've invited them. Before we get started with today's content, a couple of housekeeping things. Firstly, this is a live webinar for those of you that are listening today. Um, that means that you have the joy of being able to ask questions. So if you have any questions as we're going through the material, just type that question into the questions panel. I'll see it pop up on the screen and I'll be able to answer it as we're going through the material today. If you're not here with us live, that means you must be listening to our recording. We do record every single one of these webinars that we do, and we post them on our YouTube channel. That is youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. You'll also find it on our support site, support.bniconnect.com, or just click the question mark in the upper right-hand corner of BNI Connect, and that will take you to the support site. You'll see a thing that says live and recorded webinars, and that's where you'll find that stuff. All right, so let's talk about today's uh, topic. Today's topic, again, is the tools and reports that are accessible to most members here in the system. And there's a lot of functionality that is you know, on the other side of the home screen. So all the stuff that's on the home screen here is really, you know, this is the day-to-day -day, uh, you know, activity with your membership. So this is really the, the passing the referrals and you're recording your one-to-ones and you can see all your statistics up here. But there's more to BNI Connect than just this home screen. But you do have to dig a little bit into this program. I mean, BNI Connect actually is, is huge in all of the things that it encompasses. But to, in, in order to get to some of these tools and reports, as I said, you do have to go uh, a, a little bit further than just this home screen. And we do that by using these different menu items here at the top. You'll see we have network operations and reports. Those are the three primary functions that we're going to go into today. Uh, network is all the social media stuff. So that's the stuff that we talked about in our last webinar where we talked about connecting with other members. And that's really where you access the groups and the connections and the testimonials. But there's also the operations and the reports menu. Now the operations menu is where you go to do stuff. That's where you go to input things. That's really where the, the, the tools, so to speak, are located. Reports, on the other hand, is, reports are read only. That's where we go you know, with our you know, statistician's hat on in order to, to get some insight into our chapter's health and our membership and some other things that we can use to you know, maybe make the meeting a little bit more efficient or make our membership more efficient or help us to pass more referrals. So those are the two areas we're going to cover today. So let's take a look at these various menus. Now, before I go beyond the home screen, just to remind you, there is some other stuff. Make sure you check out the Review My Slips reports. Make sure you check out your personal participation report as well. But let's go and click on the Operations menu and have a look at some of the things that are available here. Now, if you're on the leadership team, uh, you know, your president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, um, you'll be coming here quite a bit because this is where um, you know, we go to do all of our data input. So this is where we're going to be entering visitors, for example, uh, under the manage visitors function. Um, if you're the vice president, for example, you'd go to meeting management in order to enter POMS reports. If you're a secretary treasurer, you might be using manage memberships. 
You can also follow along with the goals of your chapter. We have a mentoring program and we have create email. Now, what I just went through, you may not see all of those options on your screen. Now, different regions um, allow access to different things within BNI Connect. So you may or may not be able to um, see all of these functions. I'm going to concentrate on just a couple of things um, that are beneficial that pretty much, in my experience, every member has access to in BNI Connect. So the first thing while I'm on it here is create email. Now, if you need to get a message out to your chapter, uh, like for example, my chapter, we're, we're having a, a Halloween social coming up uh, next week that you know, our event coordinated, coordinator needed to get a message out to the whole chapter to say, hey, who's coming to, the, to our big networking event on Monday night? The way that she was able to do that was she came to operations and she came to create email. The very first thing here is email my chapter here at the top, email my chapter. Now what this does is it will give you an up to the minute distribution list of all of the members in your chapter. So I know when I first became a BNI member, it was nearly impossible to get an email out to the chapter. What I usually did was I went to the last group email that went out and hit reply all and kind of just hoped that it went to everybody because, you know, Unfortunately, if that message was, let's say, a month or two old, you know, there's people that have joined the chapter since then that they wouldn't have received that. There'd be people that left the chapter since then, so, um, you know, they don't want to get the email anymore. This will give you the most current listing. So all you really need to do is you copy this, and you do need to start your own email program. So whether that's Gmail or whether it's Outlook, I recommend putting this in the BCC line. You know, I can tell you that right now, I'm getting inundated with emails from my chapter because everybody's replying, yeah, I'll be there at the at the uh, social on Monday, or no, sorry, I can't make it. So in a chapter of 50 members, that's a lot of reply alls. This will actually reduce the reply alls, but it also keep everybody's uh, email addresses private, so that way if this email does get forwarded, uh, somebody you know doesn't throw all these email addresses on their newsletter or something like that. Right, so that's the uh, email my chapter. Now the second thing in here I also find to be important and that's email a visitor invitation. Now by the way, this is kind of a, an, an, a little bit outside the box tool, but you'll notice how there's question marks in front of most things in BNI Connect. If you have a, um, a chapter, for example, or a, um, if you're the education coordinator, you'd like to teach your chapter some of these things that you've learned the question mark will take you to the help site with that particular article. So if I click this question mark here, that's going to take me right to email your chapter. So it'll tell you all the steps and how it works and what to do. Um, it's a, just a great way to share with your chapter information on um, how to do more things in BNI Connect. But anyway, uh, the second thing here is the email visitor invitation. And I'm going to go over this again tomorrow in the visitor webinar, but um, for you guys that are on the call today as well, this is a great tool that allows us to, well, invite somebody to a BNI meeting. Now, here's a very important thing when we're using the visitor invitation. The visitor invitation should be a follow-up to a verbal invite. Now, we are not, BNI is not a cold call agency. Never have been, never will be. And that means that this email invitation shouldn't be the first time they're hearing about BNI in your chapter. It's really meant to be that, let's say that you meet somebody at a networking event and you feel that they might be interested in meeting the people that are in your BNI chapter. So you say to them, hey, I'd love to introduce you to the people in my BNI chapter. Why don't you come to our meeting next Thursday? That's great. I'd love to be there. Can you send me the details? Awesome. I'll tell you what. I'm going to send you an invitation. All you need to do is RSVP to that invitation. That's when you come back to BNI Connect and you send this invitation out. So let's say that I want to invite um, uh, Mary Poppins from Poppins Services and the email address. Now, what I'm going to do here is put in 
my own email so it sends the invitation to me so you guys can see what it looks like and then I put a personal message and a personal message is going to be um, it was great meeting you at the networking event here is the invitation that I promised all right and then I click send it's immediately going to take this, wrap it up in a nice package, and send it out. Now, the other nice thing is that it will automatically CC you as the sender. Now, that's for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it'll make sure that you know that that invitation went out. So you'll know that it went out to the visitor, and they have now received that invitation. And the other thing is it will also let you know that the um, – that the invitation has been uh, delivered and what it says in that invitation. And here's the invitation here. Uh, Hi, Mary, how are you planning to grow your business? And it gives a brief description of what BNI is all about. It then has the information about the chapter, what day you meet, what time you meet, where the venue is and the option to RSVP now. And if you scroll down, actually, there's more information uh, down at the bottom. Uh, find out about BNI. There's a whole website dedicated to um, what BNI is and explaining it with testimonials and all of that. And if I click RSVP now, that is going to take me to a specific website for, you know, this is my test chapter, the BNI Burr chapter, where the visitor can then register to visit that upcoming meeting. And again, this starts the whole visitor process that I can, um, you know, tell you more about in tomorrow's webinar. All right, you can also do things like if you go to meeting management, there is a view POMS where you can view individual POMS reports, but I'm going to show you how to view the full POMS report in just a second. And then if you have a visitor that's going to be coming to the meeting, um, one thing I do recommend doing is to enter the visitor using register a prospective visitor before a meeting, which is, again, which we'll get into tomorrow's webinar, helping to establish that visitor process. It also sends a reminder to the visitor before the meeting uh, to remind them to come to the meeting. All right, so let's hop over to the reports menu. Um, the reports menu is really where we can start to dig a little bit deeper in BNI Connect and get some information out. There's also some a couple of valuable uh, functions here as well that can make your life easier as a member. I'm going to switch over actually now from the BNI Burr chapter, and I'm going to go to my own personal chapter. By the way, I am a member. Um, I'm a member of the BNI Wakefield chapter. I have been a member since 2008. Two. So I've been a member coming up on 15 years now, and I can tell you that BNI Connect really has you know, changed a lot of things about my membership in a very positive way. So let's take a look at some of the reports in here. Some of them are basic and some of them are a little bit more advanced. Now you'll notice that there's, there's about 20 different reports here. I am not going to go through all of them. Um, I'm just going to highlight about five or six of the ones that I happen to find the most useful, the most important, but I do recommend going into the reports when you have some time, just click through them and look at them. Um, you can't really, you can't break anything when it comes to the reports. The, the reports, as I said before, are read only. So again, one, once you see the reports, you're, you're looking at the information. So please do click through all of them and come up with your own favorites. But let me uh, hop around here and take a look at a couple of these reports here. Now, the first one is the chapter roster report. The chapter roster report, this one's important, um, yeah, just so you have a you know, list of all the members in your chapter. So at the top of this will be all of the people that are officers in the chapter. So your president, your vice president, your secretary treasurer, all of the other people that are in those various positions. This is a, a great way to really know who to talk to, especially if you're having some type of an issue in the chapter. Now, 
you know, as we know, the membership committee is kind of like the HR department for our chapter. So if we have any issues going on with our membership or you know, maybe you're conflicting in some way with another member and you need to talk to somebody about it, that's what the membership committee is for. But you may not always know who the membership committee is um, or you know, what their phone number is. So the roster report can help you figure out, hey, you know what, I have a, a great idea for the uh, education coordinator. I want to find out from you know, the visitor hosts uh, who was at the meeting last week so I can reach out to them. You can do that all through here. So up top are the officers. If I scroll this report down a little bit, this will then list all, the, all of the members of the chapter along with their phone number. And also on the right-hand side, this is kind of an important little thing here. This is the 90-day uh, really activity. The 90-day activity for each of those members. And what I really uh, find interesting with this, and this is just me as a, as a long-time member, is uh, I kind of look at this as my red flag report. So if I see especially a long-time member or you know, somebody that seems to be disengaged, this will help me to reach out to them. You know, BNI, a lot of what BNI is, is about engagement and you know staying comfortable with the members and you know making sure that you're you know meeting with them for one to ones so if i look on these lists and i see you know i see a lot of people that i've had over the past 90 days you know 90 days that's 3 months that's approximately uh, you know 12 or so weeks so what i'm looking for is people that have had you know somewhere in the vicinity of 12 one to ones or higher because we really we always recommend at least one to one per week and you know people that i see that might have you know, let's say zero one-to-ones or one or two or three one-to-ones, you know, maybe I want to jump in and kind of help those people out and schedule a one-to-one -one with them and get them re-engaged with the chapter. Um, it's when they start to get disengaged that we worry that maybe, you know, we like to have BNI members for life and we really like to help people and that's what Givers Gain is all about. So that's why I like this report here. All right, I'm going to skip down a couple. The membership dues report is very similar to the roster report. It just shows when people uh, are up for renewal. Uh, but let's look at the meeting notes report. Skip down and click go. And this one is, well, again, it's kind of similar to the roster, but this one has some pretty big implications. What this report is really designed to help you do is to be a better referral giver right, to be a better referral giver. We do that by paying closer attention while people are giving their weekly presentations. You know, a lot of times, and again, I, I go back to my own chapter and my personal experience, my chapter has 50 members in it. Now, I have a pretty good memory, but it's not that good. You know, by the time we get halfway around the room, 25 people there is no way that I'm going to remember exactly who, you know, the person, you know, the third person that gave their presentation, what they were asking for that week. I need a little bit of help with that. And that's really what this was designed to do. So before the meeting, again, we recommend that you print this out or have somebody in your chapter print out a copy of this for every single person in the room. So you have one in front of every seat. And it's just meant to have a blank space here for you to basically write down notes about what people are asking for during their weekly presentations. Now, if you don't like the way that looks, uh, one of the great functions of just about all of these reports is that they have this export without headers feature. Well, there's also the export feature. So let me tell you the difference between the two. Export is going to take this information, it's gonna take everything in this report, so including who ran the report, when it was run, and country, and all that stuff up there. And it's going to make an Excel file out of that, right? So it's going to put all that information in an Excel file, including who ran that, when it was run, and so on and so forth. So this information is great. Uh, yeah, if you're just if you're running a report, you're gonna you're gonna save it on your computer to be able to reference. You know, you want to run a monthly report and compare month to month or something like that. That would be helpful here because you know when the report was run. However, if you wanted to use this report more for actually taking electronic notes or to make it a better format for printing, 
you really don't want all this stuff at top because it messes up all the sizing and formatting. So that's where this export without headers comes in. And once I open this up and enable editing because it came from the web, now I can do all sorts of things like, you know, let's say I want this uh, note field to be a little bit bigger. I can make that really wide. I can, let's say, make a bit more space here for keeping notes. And let's say I want to make this some nice colors, uh, format as table, and let's make this green this week. So now I can even sort this uh, by first name instead of last name. So, I mean, there's all sorts of things that we can do. I can even save this as an Excel file and take electronic notes at the meeting if I wanted to as well. So those are some, some great uses for this particular notes report. Again, super simple report, but it really has some, some great implications. Now the next one, the POMS report, this one is Again, the bread and butter of our report taking. Every week we're keeping track of our referrals and our testimonials and our, our uh, one-to-ones and our visitors and all of that. That's where this report comes in. So by default, it's going to show you the previous six months. The reason it does that is because a lot of our, our, uh, our additional reporting in BNI, you know, we base it on six-month statistics. And we do that based on, a, on the previous six-month period. So this is always going to show the previous six-month period. But you can really, you can make this be whatever you want. You just have to change the dates. So let's say I want a year-to-date number. So I can change that to January 1st through even today. Now, the other option here is whether or not you want to show dropped member names. So by default, it's only going to show people that are currently in the chapter, um, even though the total chapter contribution will include the hidden people as well. I'm going to go and click go. And now here we have our chapter and all of their statistics. So if I'm looking to uh, you know, just see what we're doing as a chapter or who's been bringing the most visitors or um, who's been giving the most referrals, this is a great report to see all of that information here. You know, it's nice to know that this year, since January 1st, our chapter has passed uh, $4,626,000. So that's good to know. All right, once again, I'm going to skip a couple of chapters down and look at the classifications not in chapter. Now, this one, yeah, it, this one's a little bit of a tricky report. Um, and you, you got to take this one with a grain of salt. What this is going to do, this classification is not in chapters, it's going to take the entire list of classifications in BNI. Now, there are, I believe on last count, like 572 or something like that, different classifications. And it's going to take those and it's going to compare them against all of the other chapters in your area and see which ones other chapters have versus which ones your chapter has. And then it's going to rank them by popularity of the category. So here's where you have to keep it, uh, before I even pull up the report, what you have to keep in mind is that there's a lot of overlapping categories in BNI. And yet we only have really the ability to choose one category as our primary profession, which means that, you know, Although it may say, you know, that, for example, there's, there's life insurance. There's also a category, life and health insurance. There's also a category, life, health, and disability. So depending on which one of those categories they chose, it may show up differently. But this is still a very useful report. So I'm going to click Go. And here's what we see. We see that in my chapter, we see the classifications that my chapter doesn't have ranked by the number of other chapters in our area that do have this classification. Okay, classifications that we have a number of chapters that do have it. So, for example, a, a business attorney, and I can verify that this is correct. We do not have a business attorney in my chapter. There are five chapters out of 20 chapters in my region that have a business attorney. Now, what does this tell me? It tells me that it's a fairly popular category. So when I'm inviting 
a business attorney, I can say to him, yeah, yeah, there's other business attorneys in BNI. And this adds some credibility to the invite. It also means that if this business attorney does like BNI, he has less of a chance to go and kind of shop around for chapters, and it would be more likely that they may put an application into your chapter. So that's the um, that that's the use of this report. Uh, the other thing that I find really interesting about this report, and again, here's the grain of salt. We have mortgages. So there's actually multiple mortgages categories. There's mortgages, there's residential mortgages, there's commercial mortgages, there's um, you know business mortgages. So there are a number of those different categories. I know we happen to have somebody that has the category residential mortgages in our chapter. So again, just keep that in mind when you're looking at this. But the, uh, the other thing that's fun about this is that you can look and see kind of categories that you may not have thought of before, especially if you start scrolling down. I mean, um, you know, video services and seminars, a skydiving instructor. Who would have thought that there would be a skydiving instructor somewhere in a BNI chapter somewhere? And we have somebody that does balloon art in our in my chapter uh, for, you know, kids and corporate parties. He actually turned a balloon into a uh, Aflac duck. It was pretty amazing. So that's the use, uh, a great use of this particular report. And the last report that I want to show you is this personal palms report here. And this report is really a, a great way to keep tabs on your own personal membership. Uh, this will allow you to look and see week by week what has been entered for you in the POMS report. So I could go, for example, and let me pull myself up here, and I, I'm just going to go back to the beginning of this year, but I could go back. I could actually go back to the beginning of my membership. And why don't I do that? I'm going to go back to, you know, essentially 2002 and take a look. And this is going to pluck my name out of every POMS report since 2002. And actually, our chapter only started recording data in 2004. Uh, but this pulls my name out of every single POMS report and tells me my activity for every single week. And I find this to be an absolutely wonderful report to, uh, to look at. It also shows me the people I've sponsored and the different training I have attended. All right, so the final thing I want to show you guys before uh, we hit the bottom of the hour here, I'm going to go back to my home screen. So one thing you'll notice uh, on the home screen is that there's this ribbon over here in my BNI business, and this ribbon actually kind of moves. If I click on my network, you'll see that there's another page here that has all those social media components as well as a regional set of documents that may contain some other things that you would find useful in your particular area. But below that, you should see something that says chapter. Now, what this does is it takes everything under operations and reports that you have access to and puts them all into one menu that you can customize. And that's the key right there is that you can customize this menu. So I can go in and click configure now, all the stuff here on the right-hand side are the things that aren't in my shortcut list. The things on the left are things that are in my shortcut list. So I could, let's say I want to use the, um, I don't know, the POMS attendance report in the chapter roster report. I want to make sure those are in my list. I want the uh, register a prospective visitor. So I have all those in my list. And then I can also take them and let's say I want this register all the way at the top. Actually, you know what? I want the email, the visitor invitation at the top. I can then save this or submit it. Close it out. And now we can see that it has put those things. So I could be on my My Business. Instead of going for the visitor invitation, instead of going to Operations, Chapter, Create Email, Email Visitor, I can go right to Chapter, Email Visitor. And it really, it reduces the hunting around and the, uh, the, you know, the, the clicking around for different things, the hunting and pecking. All right, so we are at the bottom of the hour. So what I want to do is to uh, open this up for any questions. Um, 
as I said, we try to keep these to about 30 minutes um, out of respect for people's time. I know we're all busy entrepreneurs and we have um, other clients to get to and phone calls to return and things like that. But that being said, um, I am always happy to stay on these calls until every single question has been answered. And honestly, the only silly question is the unasked question. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please do feel free to ask them now. The best way to do that is to type them into the questions box. While you're thinking of any other questions, just a reminder, um, you can access the recording of this once it's complete on our support site. And you get to the support site, if you click this question mark here in the upper right-hand corner, that will take you to support.bniconnect.com. This is our support site. If you click on live and recorded webinars, our upcoming webinars are here. Now our next uh, one in this series is going to be tomorrow. This is uh, one of our last webinars of the month, and it's uh, we're going to be talking about the whole visitor process from start to finish. And yeah, you know, it's a great webinar for learning more about inviting visitors. Uh, so that's going to be tomorrow, and then we will start this whole series all over again next month. We do this, uh, again, on a month-to-month -month basis. We go through this series of nine webinars, including five member webinars and four leadership team webinars. And if you wanted to find the recordings, go back one screen, and all the recordings are here. I'll have the October ones up shortly, but all of the September ones uh, are recorded, so you can always view them here, uh, all in one place, and the other thing that would be a good referral for me is if you invite somebody to a future webinar or share a recording. That would be awesome. Uh, Mark, uh, so, by the way, questions, comments, compliments, uh, criticisms, happy to have them all. Uh, Mark has a compliment. He said, thanks. You showed me some things to look that I did not know were available. Awesome, Mark. That is, uh, that, that is the purpose of these calls. Um, always happy to help out in any way that I possibly can. So if you have any questions, if you're either listening to this in the recording or if you have any questions after our session has ended today, please do feel free to email support at bniconnect.com. Or if you happen to be on the support site, right here, there is submit a request. Uh, that allows you to submit a ticket and anybody from our team uh, will be happy to answer that question for you. All right, if there's no additional questions, I'm just going to say thank you guys so, so much for being here and investing some time uh, into learning more about your, uh, learning more about BNI Connect and enhancing your membership. And remember, if you're uh, tracking CEUs, please be sure to go in, click on Submit CEU Slip, make sure to give yourself one credit for today's session, and click Submit. I look forward to seeing you on a future webinar, and... Happy connecting.